Hey everyone, this lesson is on Korsakov's syndrome. So this is a continuation of my lesson on Wernicke's encephalopathy. So if you haven't watched that lesson, please check out that before watching this one. So Korsakov's syndrome is a chronic and often irreversible encephalopathy due to prolonged deficiency of thiamine or vitamin B1. So the etiology is very similar to Wernicke's encephalopathy and it's actually considered a late manifestation of Wernicke's encephalopathy. So individuals with Korsakoff syndrome often have had an episode of Wernicke's encephalopathy in the past and they get Korsakoff syndrome later. So because Korsakoff syndrome is due to a prolonged deficiency of vitamin B1, it occurs in patients with poor nutritional absorption, intake, or loss. So if you've watched the lesson on Wernicke's encephalopathy, you're going to see that this list is the same. So anything that leads to a deficiency in thiamine can theoretically cause Wernicke's encephalopathy and Korsakoff syndrome. So some of these include anorexia nervosa, hyperemesis, prolonged fasting or starvation, GI surgery, systemic malignancy, transplantation, hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, and AIDS. So again, you have to have prolonged deficiency of thymine to have the sort of damage we see in Korsakoff syndrome. But the one I really want you to take away from this slide is chronic alcoholism. So chronic alcoholism is likely the most common cause and probably the cause of the majority of Korsakoff's syndrome. So again, chronic alcoholism causing Wernicke's encephalopathy and eventual Korsakoff's syndrome. So again, prolonged thymine deficiency leads to damage to the brain. And more specifically, the areas in the brain that are damaged are the mammillary bodies and the medial temporal lobe. So if we take this brain here and turn it and look at a coronal view, we can see here are the medial temporal lobes and here are the mammillary bodies right here. So this right here is where the majority of the damage in Korsakoff syndrome occurs in the mammillary bodies. So mammillary bodies, medial temporal lobes, parts of the hippocampus all become damaged in Korsakoff's syndrome. So damage to these areas of the brain are what leads to the symptoms we're gonna talk about in the next couple of slides. But before I move on, I wanna talk about what does thymine do specifically? What is the role of thymine? Well, thymine is required for the functioning of many different enzymes in the body. Some of these include transketolase, pyruvate dehydrogenase, and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So these enzymes are incredibly important in energy metabolism. So if we don't have thymine, we can't metabolize our energy substrates properly. So this is where the biochemical cause of thymine deficiency comes from. We don't have enough thymine, we don't have proper enzymatic functioning. As I mentioned before, the mammillary bodies and medial temporal lobes are damaged in Korsakoff syndrome. So what are some of the symptoms? So some of the symptoms include confabulation. So confabulation is like the classic feature of Korsakoff syndrome, but it's not present in all cases. Well, what is confabulation? Confabulation is when individuals with Korsakoff syndrome can't remember things properly, so they make up memories. They make things up to fill a story. So they are not necessarily lying in the sense that they don't know that they are actually making things up. So they can't remember things, so they try to fill in the gaps with things that they just think about. Uh, they could be seeing things in their environment that are being used to fill a story or fill memory gaps. So confabulation is the classic feature, but again, not present in all cases. And another key component of Korsakoff syndrome is marked and selective anterograde and retrograde amnesia. So anterograde and retrograde amnesia, what are these? What does this mean? So retrograde amnesia is essentially memories before and anterior grade amnesia is memories after. So before and after what? So really it's the damage in Korsakoff syndrome. So when they actually develop Korsakoff syndrome is kind of the middle point you can think of. And anything before that, they can have selective retrograde amnesia where they there's certain memories they can't remember, they've lost. And after Korsakoff's syndrome has occurred, memories that are formed and developed later, they can lose these as well. So they can lose both retrograde and interior grade. And they don't lose all, they lose some, and it's oftentimes marked. And this all fits in with confabulation. They make up memories to fill in the gaps from their retrograde and anterograde amnesia. So 
they're not necessarily lying because they actually believe the memories, but they're just made up memories. Another symptom of Korsakoff syndrome is apathy. So apathy is lack of caring. So they don't really care about things the way they should. But what's normal in Korsakoff syndrome is they have normal and intact sensorium. So normal and intact sensorium is essentially their senses are normal. Their sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch is all normal. And their other cognitive skills are relatively normal. And I use the keyword relatively normal. So there are some deficits. So attention and social behavior are relatively preserved. So they do have most of their attention and social behavior that are normal. Because of the damage to the brain, the anterior and retrograde amnesia, they can develop dementia. So Korsakoff's dementia. And another key component of Korsakoff syndrome is that they are unaware of their own illness. They don't have the insight. They don't seem to know that they have a problem. It all fits in with confabulation and apathy. They confabulate, so they make up memories, but they don't know they've made them up. They have apathy, so they don't really care. This all ties in with they're not really aware and they don't seem to know they have an issue. So what is the treatment for Korsakoff's syndrome? As I mentioned before, it is an irreversible condition. So a lot of times, individuals with Korsakoff syndrome rarely recover. And they oftentimes require supports. So because of a lot of these retrograde and anterior grade amnesia and some of these other cognitive issues, they may require social supports in the community. There is some evidence that suggests that there may be some improvement with acetylcholinesterase inhibitors and memantine. So acetylcholinesterase inhibitors are a class of medications we can use to treat dementia and memantine is also used for moderate to severe dementia as well. So these have been shown to show some improvement, especially with regards to some of their other cognitive skills like attention and maybe perhaps memory as well, but it doesn't necessarily fix all the underlying problems. So if you wanna learn more about other neurology conditions, please check out my neurology playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.